Hello everybody, this is Dave here. Um, this video, uh, just briefly is going over um, some of the items that I use, or actually pretty much all the items that I use when I pull down a vacuum out of a system. Um, up top here I have my um, half inch um, Appian, you know, uh, vacuum hoses. And of course, if you've seen one of my other videos, you know that I have the field piece uh, SVG micron gauge and the blue vac LTE micron gauge. Uh, for the most part, throughout last year, I've been using the uh, Appian Core uh, removal tool. And recently, a couple weeks ago, picked up the CND um, Core removal tool. So basically, in essence, um, for myself, it's still kind of hit or miss for me, you know, with the Appian hoses. I mean, I know that they do work. They, they, they do work very well when you can get it to work. Um, earlier, uh, last year, when I started in this, in this field as a service tech, um, got my Appian hoses along with everything else, um, and was having, you know, such a hard time, you know, between making sure the connections were fitting properly on the hoses, the core removal tools, um, this tree I had with my vacuum pump, you know, I didn't have this until recently, so basically I just had the standard ports on the vacuum pump itself. And I was going through so many issues, um, you know, through the vacuum process. And of course a lot of it was, you know, just learning experience, you know. Some of the sites I had been on, uh, the installs had you know, holes in the line set. And um, also too, you know, even though some, some technicians believe that, you know, if you braze well enough, you shouldn't have to really, you know, pressurize the system. You know, you, you should have confidence in your brazing. But um, it's not so much as the brazing you should have confidence in. It's just the fact that you have to make sure that there aren't any leaks in your system. Because uh, we all know um, the heating and air conditioning systems are the first things to be installed in a home. And you have contractors coming after the fact. So I've been I've been on sites where uh, nails from the... Um, when they put up the siding, you know, on the outside of the house, you know, pierce through the siding, pierce through the um, particle board, hit a line set. And, you know, you start to pull a vacuum, you're standing there for 15, 20 minutes wondering why you're not pulling a the vacuum. Then you realize, oh, well, maybe I have a leak somewhere. Then you got to go get your nitrogen tank and, and the like and pressurize. And then you realize, you know, you just pretty much wasted 30 minutes of time, you know, pulling, pulling, trying to pull a vacuum. Whereas you should always pressurize the system first. You know, I always say pressurize the system no matter what. You know, brazing or, or, or not. Always pressurize the system first. That will let you know right away if your system has a leak or not. And you don't waste time trying to pull a vacuum down. Um, so, like I said, after, after going through all those learning curves, I kind of, you know, got it down. I was still having a little bit of issues with my um, Appian um, core removal tools. Um, as far as trying to get a good connection because with these hoses um, I'll show you here in a second I bought this adapter piece to help keep my um, ends clean it is, oops it's a uh, 3 eighths to quarter inch um, you know, flare adapter piece and so working with these hoses you, you know, when you, especially when you're screwing on the um, when, you, when, you, when you're connecting um, sometimes it feels a little difficult to try to screw this thing on and it's a matter of you know straightening out your hose you know while you're um, connecting because you know because of the fact that it's so curved it's forcing the screw here to bend you know instead of you know coming on straight so sometimes you kind of work it a little bit and that's not only with your core removal tools but also you know when you're trying to connect it to your vacuum pump and um, So when you have little issues like that, that can make a simple vacuum job, you know, become very tedious. Um, I forgot some train of thought that fast. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, so that's what the Appian Core Removal Tools. Now, um, I bought these and the hoses from uh, True Tech Tools, and not only that, I also bought the um, gasket sets for these. So it is highly recommended, you know. Once a year, replace your gaskets. Um, that way, you know you don't have any issues. And um, recently, I bought the C and D core removal tool. Uh, I had you know, recently bought uh, some other uh, products and materials to kind of get me ready for um, 
you know, the AC season, uh, this coming AC season. And um, after looking at a couple of YouTube videos, I said, you know, why not give CND a charge? I mean, a, cha uh, a chance, I'm sorry, a chance. And um, last job I used it on, I did an install on the air handler, and um, they worked fine. You know, they allowed me to pump down to, to 500 microns. And initially, um, I was having problems trying to pull down a vacuum. And while I was on site, I wanted to see whether or not if both my micron gauges were working properly. Um, they both, while I was putting the vacuum, you know, got down to roughly 13, 1400 microns. And for whatever reason, it couldn't, it wouldn't go any lower. So then, as I was working on the unit outside, um, I had to reposition my vacuum pump. And I think in doing so, that allowed you know the connections you know for our 2d system and to the pump you know to be you know be solid or not not so much solid but um, uh, much easier and next thing you know I went down from 1400 microns down to six and five hundred microns uh, respectively so again when you're using these Appian hoses you know if, if you're getting that to a point to where you know the vacuum doesn't seem to be going down a little bit lower you know kind of you know, you know reposition your pump reposition your hoses because it could be the fact that um, you know because like I said when you keep them bent like this all the time um, it's pulling against um, the inside of the uh, connector um, piece here so very important and as you can see I kind of have been using my pliers, even though they say don't use your pliers uh, to make a, a connection. Um, but sometimes I had to just to make sure that I had a good tight fit. Now, granted, I didn't over tighten, you know, but just enough um, because some some locations, you know, I couldn't get, like really get a good grip uh, around the service valve when I was putting these on. And then also too, before I added this tree, I don't know if you can see it. Move this out the way. Let's see, let me scoot it over. Okay. Alright, now, this adapter piece on up is all brand new. Okay. Now, below here is the original adapter piece that came with the pump itself. So, one side is 3 eighths, the other side is quarter inch. And the top part, the top connector piece is also 3 eighths. So, I could you know, connect my Appian hoses without any problems um, but because there's not that much space under here and under here especially with the 3 8 hoses it made it very difficult for me at times to you know tighten down you know like I wanted to so I had to you know naturally get my pliers to kind of you know, give me a little extra uh, hand but now after I bought this adaptive tree piece and I tested this stuff out at home and it works great you know 3 8 uh, fittings at the top um, you know this is very sturdy you know for us as tree peas I don't have to worry about anything hitting and knocking it down or uh, it breaking it's breaking apart and eventually I probably will get an adapter piece for this uh, uh, quarter inch uh, flare so I have 3 eighths 3 eighths and I'm kinda wanna do an experiment um, whenever I get a chance to see whether or not um, if I could pull down two systems at the same time you know some homes you know you have two systems you have a system upstairs and a system downstairs and I have I can use my half inch Appian hoses for the system upstairs and I have a set of three eighths inch hoses that I can use for the downstairs unit and um, so I have two mm -hmm. micron gauges I can put in you know, one on each system and just you know, kind of see whether or not um, you know pulling out two systems at the same time you know if it's worth it if it's not you know uh, only time will tw tell but you know in my head I'm thinking that's a great idea uh, so, let's say especially if you've got two systems that you're working on and if you can get them both brazed in you know pressurized with nitrogen make sure everything is cool no leaks or anything like that then you hook up one vacuum pump four ports two systems and then you can just you know just run the vacuum and go back and you know finish you know totting it up and finishing up the rest of the project um, now as far as my bullet, yellow jacket bullet, I mean it's a, it's a pretty decent pump, you know, two stage pump, uh, I think it's six or seven CFMs, I can't remember, uh, I want to say this model is the six CFM uh, uh, version, um, but outside of that I haven't had any issues with it, you know, of course it's heavy as all get out, but you know, nonetheless all vacuum pumps are. So 
that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Like I said, you know, in another in my other video, I talked about the blue vac briefly, along with the field piece micron gauge. Um, when I when I have pulled vacuums recently, you know, I get a much lower reading from blue vac as opposed to my field piece micron gauge. Oops, can or see? Dobra outside cover. See how I just dropped it? Now it's protected. <laughs> but um. But with my fill piece back engaged, the numbers were, running up, were pretty much more consistent uh, with my S-Man 4 micron gauge built in. Uh, even though this was still kind of red, like 100 microns lower than my S-Man, the numbers between those two devices were more consistent than that's with my blue vac and the uh, micron gauge on my uh, S-Man 4. And not to say that you know, there's anything wrong with the micron gauge in my S-Man 4. Uh, it has uh, bailed me out you know, many a times when I couldn't get my Appian hoses or my core removal tools to work. Um, just pretty much just use the uh, quarter inch hoses, I'm sorry, yeah, three eighths hoses um, on my S Man 4, and um, it, it helped me get the job done. Um, you know, I wasn't stuck uh, you know, with using my S Man 4, just like I said, it just took a little bit longer. So now, in the, in the future, uh, since I got a three eighth inch hose for my S Man 4, you know, I kind of also want to do a kind of experiment with that, see how long it will take me to pull a vacuum using that 3 8 inch port, uh, 3 8, 3 8 inch vacuum port. So, that is it in a nutshell. And uh, if you got any questions about anything or, you know, comments, respectable comments, of course, you know, feel free to um, post them or email me, and uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. So, this is it in a nutshell vacuum gauges, Appian hoses. A uh, yellow jacket, a uh, bullet uh, vacuum pump, C and D core removal tool, and Appian core removal tool. Now, before I forget to mention, it was a, I forgot which video I was looking at, um, where you were talking about you know, when you never use the Appian core removal tool. Sometimes the tool itself sometimes doesn't always grab the uh, Schrader pin, and at first, I thought, you know, I was the only one experiencing that, or maybe the fact that uh, because the system didn't have any pressure, that, you know, couldn't pull the um, uh, straighter pin out, and uh, that's why they went with, you know, with these C and Ds, and uh, the C and Ds, which um, I haven't used that much, so, you know, the jury's still out on these compared to the uh, Appian core removal tools, but I do like the fact that the body is a little smaller, um, it is a little smaller, which is it's some advantages and some disadvantages. It's smaller because the fact it's easier to hold. Well, being small, that it's easier to hold and kind of you know, manipulate. But sometimes being small, it gets too close to the unit itself, whereas you can't use the access report unless you, you know, rotate it around. And then sometimes, you know, you can get this in the right position, but you, you can't use the shutoff valve. Oops. Pull that out. You can't use the sh Come on. There we go. Now you can't use the shutoff valve, so you kind of have to you know, work and manipulate. Whereas with an Appian, you know, it wasn't too bad, uh, or it wasn't as bad. Um, I think I kind of noticed somewhat why. Let me see. Well, they're pretty much the same. The shutoff valve is kind of right adjacent to. But I think with the Appian, it kind of gives you just a little more space. Whereas with the C and D, you know, they're kind of close in proximity. So. Jury's still out on these, but like I said, you know, the main reason why I got them because they were a little more affordable than the Appian core removal tools. And at the time when I ordered this and the other stuff that I ordered, you know, funds were kind of tight, so I had to kind of go with, you know, the CNDs. So that's it in a nutshell. And if you have any questions, feel free to uh, email me. All right, have a nice day.